Sweet potato farmers in places with long dry seasons face weevil infection due to cracks in the dry soil. This forces farmers to harvest their field completely, leading to an excess of sweet potatoes in the market. This can reduce the value of the crop. There is a better way. Storing your harvested sweet potatoes in dry, cool sand prevents the spread of disease or pests for many months. In this video, we will show you how to harvest and store fresh sweet potato roots for several months without rot. To begin, four days before harvest, if the rains have stopped completely, cut the foliage from your sweet potato plants, leaving 20 centimeters of stem above ground, about the length of one woman's foot from heel to toe. This will cure your roots and ensure they develop a thick protective skin, which is necessary for long storage. If you did not let your sweet potatoes cure in the field before harvest, cover heaps of freshly harvested roots with vines in the shade for three days before storage. Roots must be cured and cooled before storing. Sweet potatoes damage easily, especially during harvest. Handle them gently. Avoid using sharp objects to dig up your roots. To keep from bruising, do not drop or toss roots into a pile. Place them carefully into carrying containers. If the roots are cut or bruised, they can easily become infected by disease and pests, causing rot. Do not wash your sweet potatoes after harvest. Do not leave them uncovered in the sun. Storing sweet potatoes in a sandbox inside or in a stepped pit outside can keep them rot and weevil free for up to six months. This method is called double S, meaning storage in sand. The following will describe how to build an outdoor stepped pit. A stepped pit is best for storing during the dry season. Choose a shady area, preferably on high enough ground so that water will not enter if it rains. A pit close to home is easy to check on, but it should be away from animals or garbage pits. To prepare a pit that will hold about 350 sweet potatoes, your pit will need to be 150 centimeters long by 60 centimeters wide. This area is about the length of one long stride plus half of another long stride by about the width of two and a half women's feet placed end to end. Gather two straight poles 100 centimeters high and six poles 80 centimeters high, plus eight poles each two meters long for the roof and enough thatching grass to cover the roof. First, dig the pit 25 centimeters deep, which is about the length of one woman's foot from heel to toe. Next, Dig 25 centimeters deep, about one woman's foot length, by 100 centimeters wide, about one long stride, at the bottom of your pit. Then dig another 25 centimeters deep, about one woman's foot length, by 50 centimeters wide, about half of a long stride, at the bottom of your pit. Let your pit sit for a few days before adding sweet potatoes to let the sides and bottom dry. Construct a slanted roof one meter or about one long stride tall in the front and 80 centimeters tall or about the height of four spread out hands in the back of your pit. Slope the roof in the direction of the winds. You are now ready to fill your pit. Select your roots for storage. Only store roots that are undamaged, have cured, been recently harvested, and cooled in the shade. Cut roots or roots with weevil damage cannot be stored. Collect 35 10-liter buckets full of medium-sized sand grains. Dry the sand well, then cool for several days before using. Moist sand will cause the roots to heat up, sprout, and rot. Fine sand blocks adequate airflow. Put a five centimeter layer of cool, dry sand about the length from the top of your thumb to its first knuckle at the bottom of the pit. Set a layer of sweet potato roots onto the sand. 
making sure that the roots do not touch one another. Cover these roots with a five centimeter layer of cool, dry sand. Repeat with another layer of roots, careful not to touch each other, followed by another five centimeter layer of sand. Continue to add layers of roots and sand until you have reached the top of your pit, covering the top layer of roots fully with dry sand. You can also build a sandbox made of dried mud bricks or walls built inside a clean, dry, thatched roof hut with a door to keep out animals. This is the best method for storing if it will rain during the month of storage. Make sure the hut has good ventilation to ensure the sand in the box stays dry. If the room gets too humid, the roots will sprout. The wall of your house will be one side of the box, or you can build the box in a corner using two walls of the house as sides of your box. Use bricks of dried mud to build the other walls. Build a box that is one meter wide, or about one long stride, and 50 centimeters long, about half a long stride, and 75 centimeters tall, which is about the length of three women's feet, measuring from heel to toe. The walls should be 15 centimeters thick, which is about the length of a woman's hand from the base of her wrist to the tip of her longest finger. Let the box completely dry. You are now ready to fill your sandbox. Fill your sandbox just as you would your sand pit. Make sure the sweet potatoes do not touch each other and are covered completely by cool, dry sand. Monitor your pit or indoor sandbox about every two weeks to ensure the roots have not rotted or sprouted. If your pit or box feels warm, or if there is a bad smell, unpack it immediately and remove any rotten or weevil-infested roots. Check for sprouts. Remove any sprouts that are shorter than the fingernail on your thumb. If the sprouts are longer than the fingernail on your thumb, the root should be eaten or stored using the Triple S method to be used as a source of seed for the next season. Repack all healthy roots exactly as before. By storing sweet potato roots using one of these methods, you and your family should have enough sweet potatoes available for eating or selling for up to six months after harvest.